a few months back I made this. It's uh, basically a light in a jar. I have a couple of reasons for building this at the time. I just wanted to experiment with uh, frosting on a jar to see how that would diffuse the light, just as a, like a spray and frosting is a quick way to do it. And also there were a few programming lighting techniques I wanted to play around with just to look at the effects. But effectively I meant I ended up with this and no particular use for it. And it's been sat on my desk ever since. So what I think I'm going to do today is add a touch sensitive switch onto the metal top so that it can sit on a shelf powered up with some low level stand by animation. Then whenever you touch the top it does something interesting. So it'll load up, play one of these animations and then go back to sleep again. And so that way it doesn't feel like a, a complete waste making something like this. Before I get started I thought I'd share what was inside this how it was made. So if I unscrew the cap and put that to one side for a moment. This is just a regular glass jar. This particular one came from Asda and I've used a spray on frosting to achieve this effect. It's the first time I've used a spray on frosting before and I was really pleased with the result. So it's been sprayed uh, probably quite a few coats both inside and out and it does a really good job of diffusing the light and it was really easy to put together. So the light itself is just a string of WS2812s wrapped around a kitchen towel in a tube with a variety of other bits of cardboard kind of tacked on at each end. And so there's the light spiral around and they get to the end and there's a few more just up there just to increase the kind of lighting at the bottom end. At this end of the tube we've got a Arduino Pro Mini and that basically controls the effect on the light. And what I'm hoping to do today is add some kind of electrical connection to the lid here. So if you touch it you get a kind of capacitive input and it will trigger a change in animation. To make this all work I'm using the Arduino's Capacitive Sense library. Now this, to, to use this library you connect two pins together using a high value resistor in my case I'm using a one mega ohm resistor and then the library pulses one of those pins it emits a signal and if nothing's touching the receive pin the, that signal will transmit through the resistor effectively immediately but then whenever you touch the receive pin you form a resistor capacitor network which takes time to charge up and so there's a, you get an increasing delay between the transmit and the receive pin and by looking at that delay you can detect the presence of uh, somebody touching the pin. So what I'm going to do for now is attach this wire to the top here. So I'm going to strip this wire back and then use some copper foil tape just to secure it down. The copper foil tape's got an insulating layer so it's not really, it's not going to be conductive and help much but it's, it seems like a reasonable choice for now. The Arduino library outputs a, a unitless value which represents the, the, the time difference it takes. And so the debug code I've got running kind of demonstrates the, the, the change in value when you touch it. So it floats around about five, six hundred um, of these unitless numbers at kind of through normal kind of no contact usage. And then will spike well above a thousand whenever you touch it. So to see if this is going to work correctly, what I've set up is a very, very simple test. So if the contact, if the sensor here sees a trigger signal, something over a thousand of those uh, units, it will turn the light on for a couple of seconds and then turn it off and wait again. And see it seems to work really quite well. So it needs a pretty light touch to trigger it, although not that light. And it goes off. So I finished mapping the existing animations I'd created onto the new kind of switched interface. So if I turn it on, it goes into standby mode and we get a little kind of sparkling lights. This is, the brightness of these is quite low. And so I thought that might work and not be too intrusive if it just sits on the shelf all day. And then if you touch the top, you get the first rippling effect from before. These now run for five seconds before turning off and that kind of goes back to normal and then if I press it again you get a poorly coded kind of fire effect in there it's one of the things that did need a bit more work next one around is a rotating kind of searchlight type thing and then the full brightness kind of sparkling effect 
I hadn't worked with a capacitive sensing before, so I was really pleased how easy it was to make use of this. The documentation talks about um, certain quirks in terms of how it's powered and grounding issues, but I think I just got very lucky in that straightforward contact with the top without any other real setup worked well. And so as a, a quick kind of afternoon build, this, yeah, it, it turned a kind of an experiment with, with no future into a, a really cool little thing which can sit on a, a shelf and be an interesting thing to look at.